Welcome back to our energized developer community here in Munich. And to those of you watching online, I hope you grabbed a coffee and stretched your legs. So for our first tech track today, we're going to hear some reasons why your Java app should find its home on Google Cloud. And I'd like to welcome application development customer engineer for startups and scale-ups, Dario Banfi. Hello. Hi, everyone. How is it going? Welcome to Google Cloud Next here in Munich. Uh, it's so great to see so many of you interested in Java, especially since there is also a Golang track going on uh, in the other room, but it's good to see so many Java developers. Um, today, I'm going to talk about five reasons why your Java apps are better on Google Cloud. And uh, I know it's quite a bold statement here. I have uh, 20 minutes to explain myself. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I'll get to it soon. My name is Dario Banfi. I'm a customer engineer here in Munich. I actually live uh, 100 meters from this venue. And this is not why I got invited to talk here, but uh, the reason why I'm here is because uh, I'm a Java developer myself. I've uh, done uh, Java on multiple layers of the stack. I've uh, built uh, graphical user applications with Java Swing. I don't recommend it. Uh, I've used a lot of Spring, uh, I've done Android development, Kotlin development. So I've seen Java in a lot of different forms. And uh, one thing I want to talk about is how I think that Google Cloud is a great way to host your Java application. So let me, let me get to it. Let me get to the reason. So reason number one, it's about being able to deploy in seconds. So whenever you write an application, you don't want to spend a lot of time uh, you know, dealing with servers, uh, JVM, setting your Java home. You, you want to just be able to write your code and have it running on Google Cloud very quickly. And with this, you can do it very easily with Cloud Run on Google Cloud. So Cloud Run is our fully managed container-based serverless platform. It lets you build your code, package it as a container, and deploy it on top of our scalable infrastructure. And it gives you a lot of features out of the box, like auto-scaling, scaling to zero, observability, and so on. So it's a great fit for Java and also other languages, of course. But uh, it's, a, it's a great way for you to really save uh, on uh, you know, the deployment uh, time that you would otherwise be spending. And uh, the cool thing about Cloud Run, uh, there was the quiz question early. It supports any language. You just need to package your application as a container. And if you're using Java, you don't even need to write a container, a Docker file, actually. Uh, we support building from source uh, using uh, under the hood uh, cloud native build packs. Uh, with build packs, you can, uh, our software automatically detect the language of your application and uh, we'll create a container for it so that you don't even need to do that. Let's, let's see an example, right? So I will walk you through a fictitious Java application that we will create. Um, because I don't have a demo, but it's quite simple, so we can follow it like this. Uh, first of all, we will curl from the Spring website the starter kit, choosing dependency web. So this is just like a simple uh, Java API service that we want to deploy. We download it on our local machine, and uh, after that, we unzip it. And then we will open the demo application Java, so the main class where our, our application code will run. Once we do that, uh, we just want to add a sign of life, right? Like a, a message uh, from saying hello from Cloud Run. So in Spring, uh, we just put an annotation, a REST controller. We put uh, a get mapping uh, with a root URL, and then we are good to go. Our simple application is ready. We can uh, deploy it. We can test it out. And uh, when it comes to the deployment phase, I, I'm a lazy developer, and I always ask myself, what is the least infrastructure management that meets my needs? And I already said Cloud Run is actually a very good use case for this. So we can use Cloud Run. We go in the directory of our code, and uh, all we need to do is run the command gcloud run deploy. This command will interactively ask us which APIs we want to enable. For example, artifact registry, right? Like we want this container stored in a container registry. And then it will ask us which region we want to deploy it into. 
As of now, we have uh, 35 regions, and uh, just uh, at this uh, conference, we are announcing so many more, six or five. So um, you have like quite a lot of choice in order to get your uh, applications very close to your users. If you do need more customization, you can also put a cloudbuild.yaml file in your directory. This will give you the configuration needed to, um, for CloudBuild, our CI-CD uh, managed uh, uh, platform. And uh, for example, it's never a bad idea writing some tests before deploying the code. So you can uh, do this uh, with CloudBuild. You can add uh, multiple steps. And uh, in CloudBuild, each step will be run by a separate container so that you can uh, choose very specifically which uh, dependency you want to have in your container in order to deploy your application. So when you deploy, for example, we can use the container Cloud SDK, which is provided by us, and lets you have like a gcloud uh, command line uh, configured and ready to go. All right, so this was reason number one, ease of deployment. Now let's, let me get to reason number two. After you deploy your application, it's a good practice to not have the entirety of your traffic going to the new version right away in case you have some issue. I don't know. Uh, testing doesn't always catch the issue. So this practice is uh, called uh, canary deployments, canary rollouts. And uh, it normally takes quite some effort to build it yourself, right? Like you need to implement this logic uh, uh, and have, have this as part of your CI CD, which is quite some work, and I don't want to do that. So we can use a Cloud Run uh, traffic splitting feature for that. And uh, for those of you who have seen it, you can go in the console. You will have uh, your button manage traffic. And from there, you will be able to select how much traffic you want to each revision. A, a good practice is, for example, deploying uh, the first uh, container with no traffic and then uh, scale it up. And you can do this in multiple, multiple ways. You can do it in the console. You can do it uh, with a command line. You can do it uh, probably like the best will be to script this as part of your CI CD so that it's an automated process. Um, ideally, like with also some automated monitoring in case your production issues has some uh, bugs. So the possibility are endless. But the cool thing is that it's really part of Cloud Run and it's very simple to use. All right, let me get to reason number three. So, and this is really Java focused, right? So, a couple of months ago, we announced that we have some optimization with Java client libraries. So if you use, for example, uh, BigQuery, or if you use PubSub, or if you use uh, any cloud-native Google Cloud service in your application, you probably have a library for that. And uh, our libraries now support natively code compilation for, uh, for, uh, for a native execu executable in Java. So that's uh, quite a, a good thing that takes you, the, the, so you, you don't have to do it yourself, right? You don't have to play around with the configuration, which is also quite some work. I'll explain a bit more about that, but let me zoom out a bit. Let's talk about Cloud Run, right? Uh, uh, Cloud Run, as I said, gives you auto scaling out of the box. So you have here three containers, right? Your application is getting a lot of traffic, so Cloud Run started multiple instances of the service. What happens that if the traffic goes down, Cloud Run will also scale down until you get to zero. No more containers. And this is normally quite good for you because you're actually not paying for this container, right? Uh, so scaling to zero is actually a very useful feature depending on the application you have. The problem is that whenever you will get the first request, you will have what's called in cloud computing as a cold start. So cold start me, uh, are, is the delay that uh, it takes from Cloud Run to start your container from a uh, state where there is no containers. And uh, your users can experience that. And of course, it can be uh, annoying. Or depending on your application, it can become a problem. So how do you solve that? There is a couple of ways. The simplest one is to use in Cloud Run the concept of minimum instances. With minimum instances, you say that I want this amount of container to be running always at the same time. 
so that you completely avoid the problem of cold start. Uh, the container will be al always running, but you also lose the advantage that we discussed that you, you are going to be paying for this container. Actually, the price is a bit lower, so if you check on the pricing page, you can learn about it, but still, you're paying, right? And we don't want it. And the second way to do it is Java native compilation. This became uh, really popular uh, a couple of years ago with GraalVM. Um, I'm sure many of you already play with that. And uh, the difference is uh, quite significant for cloud native application, especially for containerized workloads that run on Kubernetes on, or a serverless platform. And let's see an example, right? I, I made uh, with the same service I downloaded earlier, I made an example between a native application which will have a startup, startup time of around uh, 486 milliseconds, and uh, your traditional Java application where the startup time will be around seven seconds. So this is almost like one order of magnitude more, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's quite relevant. Native compilation has other benefits. Also, it's not only startup time, it's also about memory utilization, uh, peak performance, and uh, it also has some drawbacks, but depending on your use case, it can be a great uh, tool to use. And let me quickly explain the difference um, between just-in-time compilation, which you use in your traditional Java application. So you write your Java code, it gets compiled to bytecode, and then this bytecode is translated to machine code just in time by the Java virtual machine. When you use ahead-of-time compilation, this is done Ahead of time, this is done before, so the, this, the machine code will be generated and will be run directly on the architecture where you're deploying to. Um, and uh, yeah, as I said, for cloud native workloads, it can be really adventures, advantageous. So going back to the initial announcement, uh, we, all of our libraries support Java native compila compilation. And uh, yeah, I invite you to try this out uh, in your application. And I, I'm also going to give you a couple of concrete tips on how to do that. Um, if you're, used for you're using, for example, Spring Native, which is probably like the most popular Java framework, I would say, you can uh, further improve the performance by optimizing uh, the classes that get loaded in the class as startup time. So for example, we have uh, Spring uh, Expression Language, we have XML. Uh, if you don't need them, you can use this configuration to remove them. You can also use a Spring Native class initialization. So for example, you can say which classes should be initialized at build time versus runtime. And I could take, talk for hours here because Java typically initializes classes at runtime. Uh, and this has, like a, of course, like a latency um, toll on your application. So with these flags, you can reduce that. It's not super simple, right? Like you need to read a bit uh, which classes can be initialized at build time because it's not valid for all type of classes. They need to be safe classes. But it's also like another performance improvement that you can uh, leverage. And then lastly, it's a native quick build mode. So if you ever uh, built a Java native application and you don't have a powerful computer, you know the pain, uh, it will start flying out of your room. Uh, so with native quick build mode, you can actually reduce the time it takes to compile your Java application. You just pass the minus uh, zero B flag, and uh, the, the, the time will be quite significant. So this is the time it takes for a normal compilation, right? So 63 seconds, four gigabytes of memory, and with the quick build mode, uh, it's going to be 42 seconds and less than half the memory. So it's pretty good, especially if you build uh, hundreds of containers per day. All right, let me go to number four. It's about security. We talked already a lot about that, about uh, you know, salsa, which is not the Mexican deep, uh, but it uh, stands for supply chain levels for software artifacts. It's a security framework that gives you some prescri prescriptive measures on how to secure your CI/CD pipeline. And this became quite relevant after the SolarWinds uh, hack a couple of years ago, where the CI/CD was compromised and some uh, malicious code was deployed to multiple uh, uh, environments. So if you want to enable uh, signed builds, you can use binary authorization. This makes sure that only code that gets built by your CI CD pipeline is allowed to be deployed in Cloudrun. Let's see how it looks. So if you go on Cloudrun, 
you can go to your services and uh, you can go on the details uh, page in the console, for example. Uh, from there, you will see that there is a binary authorization uh, flag, so you can enable it. And once you enable it, you have to configure a policy, which, which you can do by clicking the button or scripting it. Once you do that, you will see that there is a, a, some attestors. Attestors are entities which are allowed to sign a given build. And this build will be cryptographically signed, right? So in our policy, we will click Edit, and we will say that only a specific attestor like built by cloud build, in this case is my attester, will be allowed uh, to deploy on cloud run. So you, you just click the checkbox, require attestation, and from now on, no other image which has not built by cloud build will be allowed to be, to be deployed. So it's pretty neat. So you, you, you know for sure that no one can just deploy an image from the Docker registry without uh, approval, and you can make sure that your CI CD becomes the central place where security is enforced. For example, you create some security checks, you create some um, uh, vulnerability scanning. We, we talked about today about open source library uh, scanning, so this is a great place to do it, and it's a great way to enforce it. All right, so this was my reason number four. So now comes to the last reason, which is actually an announcement we are making at Next. And uh, the announcement is that uh, Google Cloud joined uh, the Eclipse Adoptium working group. Eclipse Adoptium is a consortium of Java leaders, uh, which is uh, the entity behind uh, the Temurin build of Java. And uh, Temurin has been, become really popular in the past years. Uh, it's one of the mostly, most used JDK, and it has like, the highest standards of uh, security, of compatibility, uh, so you, from now on, uh, or like not now on, but very soon, you will be able to use the Temurin build in all of our serverless products. So including, for example, Cloud Functions, App Engine. So it will be the JDK behind uh, the, your Java application. So we are looking forward for you to try this out. And uh, yeah, so let me recap. I covered a lot of ground. So five reasons. Easy deployments and painless with Cloud Run, Salsa compliant. Uh, out of the box, a lot of features. One of these is, of course, uh, advanced deployment uh, patterns uh, using uh, traffic splitting, uh, using uh, uh, this concept of canary rollouts. You get native image support for your Java client libraries. So go on and try building your Java applications to native code. And you get security from the CI CD using signed builds to production using, very soon, the Temurin JDK into your application. All right, so that was it. I hope uh, I could teach you something new, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the session today. Thank you.